Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. Back in Chapter 5, Probability, this time we're in Section 2, and we're going to be looking at probability rules. We have a few different objectives here. Describe a probability model for a chance process. Use basic probability rules, including the complement rule and the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Use a two-way table or Venn diagram interchangeably to model a chance process and calculate probabilities involving two events and use the general addition rule to calculate probabilities. We're going to start out by just refreshing our memories. In section one, we were using simulations to come up with probabilities. And this time in section two, we're not gonna be using simulations. We're going to be using theoretical probabilities. So we're gonna start out with just a tiny bit of vocab. Sample space represents all of the different possible outcomes that, it can, that can occur from a chance process. So for example, if we flip a coin, we know two, one of two things is going to happen. Either the heads is going to land face up or the tails is going to land face up. In our sample space, and we do use set notation for this, we're going to have two things. One says heads, the other one says tails. A probability model starts with the sample space and assigns a probability to each one of those possible outcomes. Let's pretend the coin that we flipped was a trick coin. And the probability of getting a heads was actually 60%, and the probability of getting a tails was 40%. Together, they add to 100%, which is necessary for a probability model to be legitimate. And the other requirement for a legitimate probability model is that each one of the probabilities for the different possible outcomes in the sample space is between 0 and 1. We have several different examples that we could look at. For example, flipping a coin, rolling a die, rolling a die and flipping a coin. But this example is where we're rolling a pair of dice. We have an orange die and a green die, light green. We're going to roll both of those together. When that happens, we're going to have six different possible face up uh, outcomes for the orange die and six possible face up outcomes for the green die. All in all, we have 36, six times six possible outcomes for the combined roll of the pair of dice. Now, if each one of these if we have two fair die and each one of these, or two fair dice, I'm sorry, each one of these is equally likely out of the 36 possible outcomes, the probability of each one of these outcomes is going to be 1 over 36 or 1 36th. Now, we can look at each of those different unique events or we can look at them in combination. So, for example, we might be interested in the sum of five coming face up. So it doesn't matter what the orange versus the green dice have as long as the total ends up being five. So we could have a one with a four, a two with a three, a three with a two, a four with a one. Each one of those is a different possible outcome because our each of our dice, each of our dies, I don't know how to say that. Anyway, each one is unique. However, what we're looking at this time, if we define event A as the sum of five, all we really care about is how many different ways can we get a five. In this case, if these four different possible combinations are equally likely to occur, that means they each have a probability of 1 36th, then the probability of us getting a sum of five is the sum of those four probabilities, or 4 36ths. Just to comment, there is no need to simplify a fraction when we're talking about probability. Leave as is so that we can see what the original denominator was, what that grand total was. Now, let's say we're interested in rolling anything other than a five. So we want to know the probability that when we roll these two, this pair of dice, what is the probability that we get a not five or anything other than a five? And we can define that as the complement of rolling a five. And we'll talk more about complement in a little bit. For right now, we know that it's going to be all the possible outcomes, 36 minus four, 
the ones that give us a five for a grand total of 32 out of 36. And that again is called the complement. So in this case, events A and B are complements of one another and they total the sample space. So you can either have a five or a not five. Those are the only possible outcomes. Basic rules of probability. The probability of any single event has to be a number between zero and one. No negatives, nothing larger than 100%. When we total all of the probabilities in a probability model for a specific event, it's got to total exactly one or 100%. We can calculate the probability of an event by dividing the total ways that we can get that event or how many different outcomes correspond to that particular event divided by the number of outcomes in total. So in the example that we were just looking at, in four different ways we could get a sum of five and so we divide by that by the total number of combinations or outcomes that we have which is 36 and that gave us the probability of rolling a five then the probability that an event does not occur is one minus the probability that it does occur. So again, that's rolling a five or rolling anything other than a five. And when we have two events that have no outcomes in common, then we call that mutually exclusive or disjoint. And the probability of the combined event is going to be the sum of their individual probabilities. Another way that we can represent mutually exclusive events is we use probability notation to say the probability of A and or intersection B is going to be zero. In a Venn diagram, we would show that with two sets that do not overlap or have no area in common. Okay, these are our probability rules once again, restated in probability notation. Please note the complement rule. And the way that we show that notation, probability of A complement is equal to one minus the probability of A. That superscript of C means complement. We have an example in our book about young people in a college statistics class, 178 in total. And the class is interested in knowing what is the probability of a randomly selected student having pierced ears, having pierced ears and being male, and last of all, having pierced ears or being male. And the words do matter, so be very, very careful when you're reading these questions. So for event A, we're going to call that the being male, and event B is going to be the student having pierced ears. When we look at A, the probability that a student has pierced ears, we're going to look at the total number of students in the class who have pierced ears, which is 19 plus 84, or 103. And we're going to divide that by the grand total of the number of students in the class, 178. Once again, we can show this as a probability in decimal form, in fraction form, or in percent form. For question B, we want to know what is the probability of a randomly selected student being male and having pierced ears. And this is where we go to the intersection of the male row and the pierced ear column. 19 students fit into that category out of the 178 that gives us the probability of being a male with pierced ears another way to say that is probability of male and having pierced ears for question c we want to know the probability of the, the randomly selected student being male or having pierced ears and this is where we're looking at the total for pierced ears 103 we're also looking at the total for male the row total is 90. If we were to add those two together, then we would be over counting the numerator by 19 because there are 19 students that fit in both of those categories. So they are included both in the total for 90 and the total for 103. So we can't do that. What we're going to do is we're going to add the individual probabilities. So 71 plus 19 plus 84 and divide that by 178. Another way that we could do that is we could do 103 plus 90 minus 19. And that's what we call the general addition rule. We're going to take a look at that in a little bit. Now, when we talk about that general addition rule for two possible events, again, here's a Venn diagram. We have two different sets, set A, set B, 
these overlap they are not mutually exclusive so there is that green area in the middle where they overlap so in our example that's where the 19 kids who are both male and have pierced ears fit in so this is that general addition rule where we total up the 103 and the 90 and then we subtract out the 19 before we divide by 178 so we can get the probability of being male or having pierced ears in this class. Venn diagrams are a super useful way for us to represent information and they kind of tell us the same information that we see in a two-way table but a little bit more concisely. We see in this Venn diagram we have either set A or set A complement which means that either event A occurs or event A does not occur. In the next Venn diagram, we have two mutually exclusive events. Event A and event B do not have any outcomes in common. That means that they never can happen at the same time. This is like getting an A on a test and getting a B on a test. Not gonna happen at the same time. The next Venn diagram does show overlap. This is where we see that green area, we call that intersection or overlap, and this means that, for example, in our example, the student does have pierced ears and is male. And when we talk about union, it's, it's the combination, and this is where we don't want to double count the area that's in the middle. So we would add the A only, the B only, and then the area where the, they overlap, and we have outcomes that are in both sets A and set B. So we're going to use that U symbol for union, something that looks like an upside down U for intersection. Here is our two-way table along with the Venn diagram that goes with it. You can see if they are not male and do not have pierced ears, they're outside the two sets of A and B, but still in the box. This is why we always have the box around our Venn diagram. And in, in words and in symbols and in counts, you can and what area in the Venn diagram, you can stop the video right here and read through this table. Super, super useful. I want you to be able to represent all of those different outcomes in symbols, be able to do it in counts, be able to do it in percentages uh, or fractions, and then also be able to describe in words. Taking a look at our section objectives, we did learn how to describe the probability model for a chance process. Remember, we need to check each individual probability is between zero and one and that the probability model totals up to 100%. We need to be able to use basic probability rules, including the complement rule or the not rule and the addition rule where we add the probabilities for mutually exclusive events. We wanna be able to go back and forth between the two-way table and the Venn diagram to model the chance process and calculate probabilities for the two events. Last of all, we wanna be able to use the addition rule when we have non-mutually exclusive events or events that have outcomes in common to calculate different probabilities. That is it for section two. I will see you back for section three.